The most premium coffee chain from Vietnam is now making its way into the United States, begging the question, do all these big brands from Asia help or hurt Asian America? Oh man, I can't wait to go to Westminster and get some Trung Win legend and pick it up in my VinFast VF8 City Edition. Dude, somebody's gonna do that. It is gonna be lit, man. Shout out to the Vietnamese come up. But yeah, we gotta talk about this because as we know, there are a ton of multi-million dollar, a very well-ran, well-operated brands from Asia that have been coming to the United States for decades now. And I guess the impact on Asian America, whether it keeps Asian Americans Asian or it helps them or competes with Asian American brands is still in question. Yeah, and I think that there's a lot of other questions too that maybe even some old historical geopolitical things that come into play. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Obviously, Andrew, you would think maybe immediately uh, on the outside looking in that all Asian Americans would be really excited to see chains from Asia come over. But that's not the case, right? Yeah, the I, communities are split. Yeah, I mean, I think because obviously there's actually, uh, and I think a lot of the root of this, most of the disagreement is usually coming from Asians who immigrated or, you know, came to America under certain circumstances. Maybe 60s, 70s, yeah. 80s, 90s, Left right? that country, and that country since then has been taken over by a new regime or government, which they don't like, and therefore they're still going to hold it against them. I mean, it happens within China and Vietnam, as we know, because of the political rift between right, right. certain generations of the immigrants. So I guess that's an interesting part. Yeah, for sure. And I think that that's what causes some skepticism. Although I do think some of the younger generation is trying to like move right. past it. However, uh, specifically about Trung Nguyen Legend, Andrew, this is a premium local brand from Vietnam. I believe there's a chain called Phuc Long that's number one. Mm -hmm. Trung Nguyen is number two. Trung Nguyen Legend is their premium tier. Ah. So it's almost like a Starbucks reserve. And they're at a uh, Trung Nguyen Legend, Latte, Andrew, is 950 USD at their new Westminster location. Dude, that's crazy. Trung Nguyen and like Phuc Long are like pretty common Vietnamese names, it feels like. Yeah. Is that like naming like a coffee shop? Like, it's like Pete's Coffee. <laughs> that's funny. Um, but yeah, let, Andrew, let's just talk a little bit about a few other Asia chains before we get into the comment section that I think could come over. Mm -hmm. Andrew, Toast Box from Singapore. Okay, you've been rooting for this Gosh, one. Gosh, I'm telling you, they already kind of got those Apple Store aesthetics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm telling you, as you can see right here, Andrew, they got different types of laksas. They yeah. got Kaya Toast. I just don't think people in America are, are ready to eat like curry laksa out of like a Apple Store like decor they like know? to do that in asia they'll they'll apple store something and then just serve you like in china like mala tong or something mm -hmm. like it doesn't even fit with that decor um from japan andrew these come on you got to stick with me the, i think these really would work lawson's mm -hmm. lawson's is sort of this americana 1920s store that competes with 7-eleven in japan right and everybody knows that their hot food section is superior right well you know what it is for these chains that want to come over even like toast box probably the first place that they should probably land in is like arcadia mall in california you know like in the san gabriel valley you're somewhere. saying like an irvine type yeah situation where it's so asian where they possibly could sustain that brand at first check it you know arabica percent coffee came over from japan from and that's kyoto right that's premium coffee even in america it's not cheap that's know? a good point but andrew, it's awesome i like it andrew mr donut from japan mm. even though there's a lot of copycats of this ponder ring style nowadays the, that's they're the originator yeah. Yeah, yeah and andrew did you know that japanese actually own 7-eleven now a japanese company does a japanese company owns all 7-elevens right. globally so i think 7-elevens from japan could come over andrew from china andrew there's this sp spot called real kung fu that actually got sued by bruce lee's family for basically jacking bruce lee's Image. Likeness. Yeah, yeah, they, they use this image. That's definitely <laughs> Bruce Lee. Uh, Dico's chicken is one. It's kind of like chicken sandwiches, like fried chicken sandwiches. Yeah, I think it was designed to compete with uh, China KFC at a lower mm. price point. But Obviously, from Taiwan, I don't know that any of that are on the come up, but tons of boba chains and bakeries from Taiwan have come over to America. All right, so, Andrew, this is an interesting point. We can talk about the, the, this being a metaphor. Andrew, do you think the Taiwan chains destroyed the American chains like TapX? and lolly cup and i guess is that the fear with something coming over like trung win legend to the pre-existing vietnamese american brands like a lee's coffee or like a etc cetera, etc cetera. you know there's there's a couple chains right. that are like depending on what area yeah i mean about. i guess that's a question for everybody out there to wonder is like 
Um, I, I think there's pros and cons to it. I'm going to get into it at the end. But essentially, I like to see the chains from Asia. I think it helps keep Asian America Asian. And I think they're well ran and they're just good products. But of course, there is some pride in taking part into an Asian American born brand. But I, I, I see both sides. It's really tough. But it's tough to compete with the motherland corporate headquarters with like hundreds and thousands of people in, oh, like, yeah. in like a skyscraper. Um, Andrew from Hong Kong, what about Maxims? Mm. I'm a fan of Maxims. Interestingly enough, Andrew, I'm going to say no to Cafe de Coral, though. Yeah, I don't think they're going to make it over, to be honest. You, uh, Fairwood or Daigalok. Andrew, from Korea, they got a uh, KFC competitor called Lotteria, or mm -hmm. that's the McDonald's competitor. Yeah. They have a, a, a cheaper pizza chain called Pizza School. But mm. for me, this is I just throw this one in there. Andrew, Andong Jimdak. You know what it is? Like something like this Jim Doc spot, I think it could have a store or two, but would that be massively popular across America? Probably not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think even like Americanized Asian populations, they're not as into the stews, I noticed, like the braises. That's more like Asia, Asia. No, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, Andrew, from the Philippines, Mang Inasol is actually just a chicken and rice chain. And a lot of people were saying that could be something that could get brought over. Yeah. Um, and I believe it's owned by Jollibee's. And uh, Andrew, chains I don't like, even though they are very popular in Asia, interestingly enough, most burger. <laughs> Say you like most burger. The patties are kind of weird, man. Um, anyway, let's get into the comments about Trung Win Legend specifically. Someone said, hey, man, it's going to be better than Cafe Lou. I need to know, <laughs> though. Yo, um, I don't think it's a direct competitor with Cafe Lou. I think uh, the markets and the reasons why people go to Cafe Lou are pretty different. Okay, that's fair to say. Well, I mean, I guess does it say, Andrew, does this speak to the difference between Asian American chains? They're going to be different than the chains from Asia, right? Fundamentally? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm trying to think of like, you know, you look at Boba Guys as a Boba chain. It's very Asian American, way different than like a Xing Fu Tong or like- No, no, nothing like in Yifang Asia Kudu. feels like a Boba Guys. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really Americanized. So I think like there's always going to be that sweet spot. But because I think the chains from Asia, most of them initially are going to be seen and viewed as so Asian that it's not going to capture the mainstream American market yet. You're saying unless, for example- No, unless it is- way better than everything else. So like a da, da Long Yi, which is a hot pot brand from Sichuan that came over. I think that and Heidi Lao, which are from China originally, like those brands are like, they're just really good. Well, same with Dolar Shop too, yeah. right? Yeah, but I guess it's, I think it just caters to a different demographic. Mm -hmm. And that's why the uh, Chung Win legend is entering the Viet coffee game or the Cafe Suda game at such a different price point. Right. $10 per I coffee. Mean, Obviously, Lee's, Lee's is a Vietnamese American brand, and they're all the way in Costco. I mean, it is true that when you... When people view a premium brand from Asia, I think especially the older generation is going to treat that more premium than going to even an Asian American or Vietnamese American coffee chain. Right. To be honest, like because You're Lee's is considered cheap, although Lee's is good in its own way, but it's like a budget spot right. for bun mi's and like other Viet snacks. But then you got Trung, uh, Trung Win Legend, which you can imagine a lot of like upper middle class or well-to-do Vietnamese people are going to be going or, or maybe people who travel back to Vietnam all the time to do business exactly. and they're looking for the same type of coffee shop vibe that they have when they hang out in Hanoi or Saigon, right? Somebody said, hey man, don't support this VC coffee, man. This is owned by the commie Vietnamese government. And this kind of yeah. goes back to what we were talking about about sometimes, Andrew, there is a geopolitical, geopolitical split. I mean, you see it in the Vietnamese community. You see it in the Chinese community as well. Like, um, I have some friends, honestly, that are Taiwanese, they kind of generally don't um, go to very many mainland things. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's definitely there, and I mean, I think that the younger generation doesn't think about it very much. But I do think those who are more tied in or raised uh, thinking about the narrative, yeah, I, I guess they would care. I think it mattered to them. Yeah. So ultimately, Andrew, is it good or bad? Because right now on the Trung Win Legend. Yelp page, there is like debates going on. Like yeah. some people are giving it two stars. Some people are giving it five stars. But of course, everybody's saying, man, this is pretty expensive. Yeah, yeah. I think that 
capturing the pure Vietnamese American market at first will be tough because they're going to have to prove that their product is clearly better and the experience is clearly upscale and that the ex like the reasons why you go there are not why you would just go to Lee's when you can get a Viet coffee for three, four dollars. But you right? can't get the civet poop, the civet poop coffee. The at, civet at poop. Lee. Dude, I, I would try that. I would, I would try, try it. it. Yeah. Um, Let I me know if somebody in New York City got the plug on civet poop coffee, man. I don't want to order the pods either. I want the real thing. Yes. <laughs> Send me the beans. Um, <laughs> I could see why Asian American entrepreneurs feel uneasy about it. Like, I'm sure they like it. But at the end of the day, I think that I always said this. Asian American entrepreneurs, Andrew, needed to be more like Boba guys where they were really expanding the market into the Americans. Yeah, you, yeah. Like, because when you go talk about like the enclave population, if you make me bet on an Asian American brand or the chain from China, not that there's not pie slices for both, I'm betting on the chain from Asia. Yes, exactly. I mean, you would bet on the multi-million dollar chain that has headquarters, offices, uh, has- I mean, people wearing three-piece suits yeah, to work people, every day. And CEOs and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I would if it was a heads-to-head -head battle. Obviously, I do think that it is competing with Asian American brands and it is what it is. But we always said this though, because America is such an immigrant country and there's always a constant flow. You mean like of, new waves of immigrants? There's always a constant flow of Asian immigrants that Asian America stays Asian because of these Asian chains and because of the recent immigrants. It helps us stay Asian. Now, does that also provide some other smaller complications of like, well, Asian Americans, right. we just want to be seen as any other right. American. Or, or like my parents came in the 50s. Yeah. My parents came in the 80s. My yeah. parents came last year. They're yeah. not necessarily all going to share the but same But these chains really help the recent immigrants. Like the, a lot of recent immigrants will probably work there, have a lot of opportunities there, et cetera, et cetera. We always said on this channel that a lot of Asian America will always forever be impacted by the influence of Asia. That's all. And, and the new immigration waves, right? It will right? always be like that. Yeah, I don't think that anybody should gatekeep just because you're, you know, we came yeah. from a particularly I get, large I mean, immigration wave listen, in the 70s or the 80s. Shout out to Win Coffee Supply, Sarah Win. You know, it, does this compete with them? I don't know because that's a CPG. That's something that, that's a can that they sell. That's not necessarily a brick and mortar. But of course, I think that, a lot of people, I mean, anytime, if you're, if I'm opening up a hot pot restaurant, I'm competing with Da Long Yi, Heidi Lau, Dolar Shop, these big multinational chains, to be honest. Right, right, you know? right. So it is what it is, but I don't know. I mean, I think that, I think there's a benefit from them being there as well. Yeah. Ultimately, guys, I mean, I think that we got to remember that, you know, everybody has a right to, to the American dream. To yeah. be honest, in a way, and that sounds like a crazy like political talking point, but, but at least within the context of what I'm referring to within like Asians judging other Asians from different immigration waves, it's really true. Yeah, but I mean, at least on the upside, if anything, there's going to be more good, high quality Asian products in America that That's are going to last because these, these companies... If they come to America, they're not shutting down in a year. Yeah, I think it gets a little complicated in the micro, but in the macro sense, it's ultimately good. Let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. Keep it civil. You guys know we encourage debate. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.